Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor and Jet Engine tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this dynamic music player right here. I wanted to have it when a user selects one of these songs right here, that it automatically will play the song and also update the information over here. So let me show you a quick example of how that's going to work. So if a user goes ahead and selects this one, it's automatically playing a new song and you can see right here, it's updating this information right here on the right. So let me do one more example so you can see how it works. So as you can see, it's basically happening in real time. And the way I was able to pull this off is I'm using URL parameters to change out all of this information dynamically. And if you aren't familiar with what a URL parameter is, it's just this little string right up here inside the URL. So you can see right here, I have it highlighted as song equals five. So I'm having each one of these have a different URL and then this is all just gonna show dynamically. So that's what we're gonna be using Jet Engine for is able to pull off that type of functionality. So let me jump into the back end and show you how I have everything set up. The very first thing is you need to make sure that you have all of your audio files ready. So in this situation, I knew I was just gonna have five different songs right here. And what you need to do in order to follow this tutorial, I am using MP3s. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your songs are MP3s. Now what you need to do is name them a certain way and let me show you how I have that. Inside of my media library, I just have everything labeled very simple. I have it song1.mp3, song2, song3, song4, song5. So you can have as many as you want, but they all need to be inside the same uh, directory. And I'll show you what that means in the code later. So as you can see, this is my media library. It probably looks a little bit different because I'm using a plugin called Happy Files. I'll leave a link in the description below. This will keep all of your music separate from all of your different files right here. So I knew in this situation, this would be a great use case where I could just drop all my MP3s in here and keep it a lot more organized. So once you have all of your files uploaded, what you need to do is, so what I recommend is go ahead and just select the file URL because we're gonna be needing that inside the code later. And the next step I recommend is go underneath your jet engine settings right here and just make sure that you have this module enabled. So if you go underneath modules, this one right here called dynamic visibility, just go ahead and make sure you have that on because that's what's going to work right here. So all of this information right here, this is all using that functionality in jet engine. So you're going to want to make sure you have that on in order to follow this part of the tutorial. And here we are on the back end of this page. So what I'm going to do is instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to reverse engineer it and show you how I have everything set up. And then you could just drop in the code and add this to your type of website. So as you can see right here, I just have everything split down the two column layout right here. The user can choose the song. This right here is just, this is where most of the code's gonna be happening. And that is all using JavaScript. And let me expand this a little bit more. And as you can see, this audio player is just using the default HTML5 audio player built into your browsers. So if you load this up in a different browser like Safari, it might look a little bit different than it does here in Chrome. So that's the left side of the player. And then on the right side is where I have all of those dynamic conditions. So as you can see, the very first one is when you first load up, it's just a woman drinking coffee. Then below it, I have another one that's, if I choose right here, you can see I have the container called song one. Then we have song two right here, song three, song four, song five. So as you can see, this is just one long list. And then I'll show you how you dynamically, you know, tie all of this to URL parameters. So now that you understand how this is all set up, let's go ahead and walk through the code. And then you could just copy and paste the code in the description below on your website and just do a few op options right here and you'll be good to go. Okay, so let's start with the very first one and that is this drop down option right here. So if you just copy this code in, what you need to do is the very first option right here, you could just keep as is. So when the user hasn't selected one, at least they have this knowing that they have to do something. So select a song. Then what you need to do is underneath each one of these options, give it your own unique name. So in this case, I just called all of these, you know, some fake songs I came up with. And then underneath value, this is where, this is gonna be very important. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that what you uploaded inside your media library over here, that they correspond. So right now we need to make sure that song one is equal to this value of one. Then song two, always make sure that it's, you know, corresponds. 
So that's what's important is you got to make sure all of your files are named correctly because this code is just going to pull everything in dynamically. Then right down here, I have another HTML widget. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit so you can see the code. So this chunk of code right here is how the audio player is gonna get rendered out. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you keep all of this the same, the audio ID and all of that, because this all corresponds with this information down here. Then the only thing that you really need to change out is one other thing down here, and that is right here. Your URL, of course, is not gonna be the same as this. So whatever you uploaded right here, this is why I said copy this to your clipboard. This is your URL base right here. So just copy everything right here in front of the song and that's the base of where all of your files are gonna be. So you can see right here, I'm at wikidemo.com slash wikidesign, WP content. I uploaded this in April. And then everything right here after that slash, this is the all dynamic. So you're gonna wanna make sure you don't have it say like song one, song two. Because you can see right here, this is a string that is being all called from JavaScript and it will automatically populate correctly. So what I mean by that is, if you remember, I only have five songs in here, but if I wanted to go ahead and add a hundred songs in here, all you have to do is just make sure all of your song names are called the same thing. So song six dot MP3, song seven and dot MP3. So that's all you have to worry about is just changing out this one URL right here. And then the code is going to do all of the hard work. So let me go ahead and shrink this a little bit more so you can see how this part over here is all functioning. So like I said, this is all just information on one page and it's pulling in this stuff dynamically by URL parameters. So let me jump into the very first one right here called song one. I'll come back to this one right here, but let me go into song one and show you how you have to have this set up. So as you can see, this is just one big container. I just have like a header image and some dummy text in here. What you need to do is go underneath advanced and then underneath dynamic visibility, turn that on. Underneath the condition type, I have it as show element if condition is met. And then I'm doing condition and you can see right here, there's a whole bunch right here. This is what I love about Jet Engine. They give you tons of flexibility. So I did this one called equal. So now I'm gonna show you how to choose the parameter. So if you click on dynamic tags, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down into site and then where it says request parameter, just select that one. Then what you need to do is select it again. Just keep this one at git and just type in the word song. Then what you need to do is the value is one. So what that means is this dynamic condition is only going to show if this parameter at song one. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me go down to here and so you can kind of understand. So if we go to the next one, it's the same exact thing, but instead of the value of one, I kept everything the same, and it's just value of two. So it's requesting the parameter of song two. So every single one of these, you just need to go down the list and dynamically show it that way. And then this one is gonna be three. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me go into the front end of the page and show you that this is the URL parameter right here called song and then equals five. That means that you're on this one right here. So if I go to three, you can see right here, it's automatically going to change. And that's only gonna show that container that is equal to three. So that's how easy it is to do dynamic conditions with URL parameters. Once you understand how it works, it's really easy. You just like I said, I'll just do one more. So this one should be number three. So if I go underneath show element only if equal to request parameter song three. Now let me go ahead into the top one and show you, this one's a little bit different. What I wanna do is hide this one if it contains either song one, two, three, four, or five. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but if you only have a handful of songs like this, this is probably the easiest way. And just like the other ones, what we need to do is go underneath dynamic conditions. So instead of showing uh, the element, I'm gonna hide the element if this condition is met. And I chose this one right here called in the list. And then I'm doing the same parameter and just doing the get song. And then what you can do down here is add multiple values. So I'm saying hide it if it's in the list of song parameter one, two, three, four, or five. Now let me go ahead and hit update and show you how that works. So if we're on the front end of the page, let me show you how that functionality is gonna work. So by default right now, there is no song being displayed. So this isn't gonna be hidden. But let's go ahead and of course, let's choose a song. And then you can see that sections are gonna automatically be hidden. 
but let's go ahead and just say someone just types in a random song name, something like that. So you can see right here, it's not in that list, so it's automatically going to show this one and hide all the other ones. So the one thing I did learn is, let's say you want to go ahead and share this link to song number five. What's cool is that you could just copy and paste this URL, give it to somebody, and it automatically will open up that player at that song with that song's information. But it's not gonna autoplay the song. So let me go ahead and show you what happens. So you can see right here, it doesn't uh, play the song automatically, but it will pull up all the information correctly. So after some research, I found out that that's actually a feature inside of browsers. Because the way it works with browsers and doing like autoplays, is it wants the user to do some sort of interaction before it would do the autoplay. Because that's, let's be honest, it's pretty annoying if you automatically just go to a URL and start blasting music. So in this situation, this is going to give the user the ability to actually have to interact with something and then it could change into the song. So as far as I know, there might be a way that you can like do some code hacking and do the autoplay by force, but I don't like fighting the browser and the user ability. So let's just go ahead and not add that to the code. But that's how easy it is that someone could just copy and share that URL and it automatically will dynamically show that information. And that's it for this video on how I created this dynamic music player using Elementor and Jet Engine. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications whenever I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.